Now, don't worry, madam, this is a perfectly routine procedure. Now, can you see the man who tried to give your cat the ecstasy tablet? No. 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 That's him. That's the man. Is it because I is black? Come on, y'all, let's Me said, Bo, select her! <laughs> Shout going out to the West Midlands. <laughs> Believe it or not, in our society, things like that happen every day. <laughs> apart from the breakdancing bit. <laughs> in police stations up and down the country, innocent people is getting fingered. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Let's stop the fingering. Uh, <laughs> that was an identity parade. We has all got an identity. In fact, my mate Dave has got three. <laughs> He's known as George Phillips in the Bracknell Benefit Office. <laughs> and in the one in Slough, you know, in Upton Lodge, is Sally Kemp. <laughs> this show is also about freedom. Freedom to think, freedom to speak, and freedom to think <laughs> even more. There are some people out there that is so ignorant that they spend all their time reading books and don't even bother watching telly. <laughs> British TV is known round the world for its in-depth documentaries, nature programs and unbiased news. America has so far managed to avoid that kind of shite. <laughs> it still has telly of the highest quality. Check this. Selecta. Now it ain't just Britain that has got the telly. Now it is also spread to a place called America. That is why I has come here to Hollywood, and I ain't talking about the nightclub in Bracknell, to see the set of America's most famous drama called The Bold and the Beautiful, which apparently is about a fit girl with a shaven haven. Respect. <laughs> Or I swear you'll be sorry. I've been introduced as B&B's new bad girl. Aye. So to give you a little future of what's going to happen without telling you specifics. For real? Yeah. And can you tell us specifics? <laughs> it's a secret. You just have to watch. So what is it like when you do the romance scenes? What does that feel like? Um... Well, I haven't had very many. In Europe, they cut out all the bits of it actually going in and whatever. <laughs> Is you upset about that? I don't understand. They don't really show the whole thing in Europe. They just cut to you waking up, you know, in the morning as if, you know... Well, they don't show it going in here either. <laughs> they have a very strong censorship bin. What, you don't actually do it all for real, real? No! You don't? You act doing all that kind of thing? Is that true? You act the whole thing in... Oh, my goodness, no! Can I be in this scene? No, unfortunately not. Just anybody can't go on there. They need to go special through the casting office. Can I not just be in the background or...? There, there are special the, laws even for On that. the side of the bed, though. I'm sorry. They said before and that I was going to be in the whole thing. That's why I was no. so into doing it. No. You said that I was going to be in the fucking thing. Excuse me. For <laughs> sorry, but you did promise me. Sorry about my language. And then I'll see you look back to him at the end. We'll Can I have a call? And then I'll back to you. Can I have a call? Sure. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Talking about it. Talking about it. Okay. 
Why is it whispering? Oh, I thought it was because you were. I was whispering because he was whispering. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, uh, hold on. I was full. I was whispering because he was whispering. I thought maybe somebody came by and was wanted to. No, no, no. I was whispering because he was whispering. I thought I was whispering because you were whispering. Oh, no. I started because you started first and then I did the whispering thing. Oh, it's good to me. Oh, oh. Oh, we have to be very quiet in the hall because the show is taping. Now I was gonna check out Sally Jesse Raphael. She be like Vanessa Feltz, except she look well different. You'll see what I mean. Check it. <laughs> as you're saying, I is here from England, and is it cool with you lot if I just sit in the audience and just check this out? Because that's a big fan here, you know? And I, this is my first time in the US of A, and I was loving your country. Could I ask you about one of the problems that I've got? Surely. Uh, like a few weeks ago, me was going down Ega My Street from where we live, and me see me Uncle Jamal's van there, and then the back it says, "Cause if this bus is rocking, don't come knocking or whatever." <laughs> and uh, but I heard these sounds coming from the bus, from his van, and I opened the back, and I see this like massive geezer like attacking me Uncle Jamal. <laughs> And I think I was going to try and stop them because I was hearing the shouting and screaming or whatever. And then I see that the skizzers, why is the skizzer attacking him if his pants is down? And I realised that he ain't attacking him, he's actually kissing him. Did he, so were the screams screams of delight or were they screams of anger? Or when were they I, screams of what kind of screams were they? When I heard it, I thought that it was, he was getting beaten up or something. Aha, uh -huh, but then you realised they were having sex. Well, I don't know if they were definitely doing that, but they weren't wearing... They were having stuff. sex. Is real? I can't even say it. Is your accent real? It's my accent. I tell you, a lot of people... I know that a lot of people out here in America think that everyone speaks like the Queen, but I tell you, there's a lot of people who is living not like the Queen, who don't speak like the Queen. So it ain't my problem if I don't sound like the Queen. I ain't the Queen. Once they start putting a crown on my head, giving me all the money, then maybe I'll start speaking like the Queen. <laughs> Until that time, I ain't speaking like the Queen. <laughs> my own posse is the West End's massive. It'll be an honour to me and all them of my boys at home if you could big them up. Can I hear it for the West End's massive? What advice do you have for me from doing for the first time my own show? I think you're doing pretty well. That is very Do you know what's good you. about you? What? You're you. Thank you. You're welcome. That's very nice. What do you mean about It's a that? nice compliment. That's it very means nice. you're, you are who you are. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yo, 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 him take enough risks when him spin them discs. Big it up for DJ DeForce. By the way, before I forget, apparently my Julie said she know you. <laughs> Julie? Julie? Let me think about that one now. <laughs> ah, Julie, man, she a ride out good. <coughs> um, from long time, she have a birthmark in her shibati crease. <laughs> As you met her or not? <laughs> now the people at the channel said, Ali, who would you like to interview? Me said, get me President Blaise. But him said, won't do it. Me said, get me the other guy, the controversative. You know, the one who married that woman so people wouldn't think him was batty. <laughs> but he said he wouldn't do it. Me said, just get me someone, me not even that bothered. So please welcome the best Prime Minister this country ever had, Ray Hattersley! Big up yourself, big up yourself. 
big up yourself. I was about after the show, you, me, uh, a jacuzzi, and anything you want from KFC. Anything. <laughs> so is Roy short for Leroy? No. <laughs> no, Roy is short for nothing. Where I come from, a lot of Roy's, Roy's are thick on the ground in Yorkshire. Uh -huh. Roy's a very common name. So, Roy Stan, <laughs> what happened to all your old homies like Neil Pillock? <laughs> well, well, he's a big man in Europe. Um, he's really running things from... Uh, he's Russia. running tins there. Yeah, and as everybody knows, they're really running... As though they're running things there, they're also running things here. Aye, uh, for real. Yeah. The Amsterdam connection, all right? That's right. <laughs> So why don't you just get all your bad boys back together? You, Pillock, Dr. Livingstone, MC Foot, and mash up players and all his rude boys. I wasn't, I, I wasn't a bad boy. I was a good boy you can possibly imagine. Actually, you've got to be well careful, though, if you attack the government. You need somebody well hard to take out Mo Molam, because she in the IRA, innit? it? <laughs> yeah, you, well, she was, but then Blair removed her from Ireland altogether, and now she's... Now she's probably in the WVS. Is that a rap Women group? Women's Voice. <laughs> so tell me, what is Tony Blair's really like? Oh, um, he wants to be Prime Minister. Do you think he ever will be? <laughs> I think in ten years' time, Aye. Tony Blair will still be Prime Minister of this country. Do you think that he is perhaps a bit of a dong? <laughs> I think he's a pretty successful Prime Minister. Listen, I know you can't say it because otherwise... <laughs> is Tony Blair's not, not a dong? <laughs> well... <laughs> uh, uh, since I don't know if he is one, uh, I don't know if he isn't one either. All right, well, let me ask one last question with this. The opposite of everything you say is true. So, is he a dong? <laughs> no. Yes, he's a dong! You heard it here! You said he was a dong! Check this. I heard that Tony Blair's missus is preggers. <laughs> is that true? I think it must be true, because it's been in all the newspapers. But don't you think it sends a bad message to young people? Him getting his wife up the duff. <laughs> I mean, you'd think as president he'd have more taste and be getting some quality muff like Mariah Carey. I, I think quite the opposite. I mean, I think Blair is a lucky Prime Minister. All right. And that's a good thing to me. And I think the fact that his wife's having another baby will move him up the opinion polls 5%, 10%, I don't know, make him even more popular. Me is heard from a mate that the kid is gonna be black. <laughs> and he know. You getting me? Me mate, no. He's gonna be black. Is that true? I think if I was a betting man, I'd probably gamble against it being black. Ain't that a bit racist, though? <laughs> no, um, I'd gamble against it being black simply on the probability. So what do you think about Maggie Thatcher? I think she was a catastrophe. All right. What would have happened if you would have fallen in love with her? <laughs> I would have been certified as insane. <laughs> Did you ever think, though, of flipping her over and boning her? <laughs> you know, politicians don't like to give straight answers. For real. <laughs> but I think I can say, without much doubt, that I never actually thought of that. So is you telling me that no one from your party has actually seen Maggie's thatch? <laughs> there are some sacrifices which are above and beyond the call of duty. Thank you very much, Les Battersby. You've been on it for ages. <laughs>
Welcome back. During the break, me and Roy has just been chilling. He's been telling me some stories in one go. Unbelievable. Now, check the state of family today. Girls is having sex at younger ages. There's an increase in absentee fathers. And more and more people is having affairs. But we shouldn't just concentrate on the good things. <laughs> to discuss some of the more shitty aspects as well, we got on a nanny, a headmaster, an author, and some old biddy into a room for a discussion. Realize. <laughs> So, at what age do you think you should start beating your kids? <laughs> Never beat them. I mean, I ain't talking about beating the crap out of them, but just something like a little dead arm or something like that. Yes, absolutely. I mean, when you think about it, a child learns from a small amount of pain. Do you think it's right for to get a wet towel and flick the bucket? <laughs> I don't think it will hurt them very much. Because that will teach them discipline, but also a sense of humour, because it can be funny for the kid as well. I mean, I don't think it's for any person to interfere in another person's way of doing things with their family. Let's bring this on. At what age should parents give their kids their first spliff? <laughs> like, uh, It's illegal, do you know that? It ain't illegal if your dad gives it to you. <laughs> Do you think at least they should teach them how to recognise good gear so they don't get sold by the old No, you should never teach a child that. You'll go to hell for it, in my opinion. You want to end up in your middle years visiting your child in prison where he's beaten and buggered and given drugs. He's like thin. I mean, that's just the pits, man. For real, for real, that's the pits. <laughs> As you would say. OK, let's bring this on. I just read about this woman who is 80 who had a kid by having sex with a test tube or whatever. <laughs> I think it's something repulsive. And do you think it's ever right to have the test tube? Yeah, I think for couples, loving couples, who can create a wonderful family for a child, for some reason they can't do it biologically, that's a scientific benefit. 80 unfair bringing up a kid inside a tube. <laughs> Ain't that going to be well bad for the kid? <laughs> Inside a tube. I mean, it's just the conception. Well, it? Whatever. For it's it grows up in the womb. I think yeah, the child needs to feel the womb of the mother, the heartbeat. Yeah. And but for real, but as the, the first years or whatever, that is going to ruin the kid's head and the way it thinks of the world. If it's <laughs> living in a tube. Know about. It doesn't, it live, doesn't in live, tube. live in a tube. Well, how big is the tube? <laughs> I think it's a tube. It's just an ordinary tiny tube. And it's just the ordinary. And conception. they put it in bigger tubes Not when it's. baby. But conception. they do until like the year. At, at what age do they take it out of the tube? It's never in the tube. Days or okay. hours. Okay. Do you think homosexuals who is gay should be allowed to adopt kids? <laughs> I think it's an unnatural situation and not in the best interests of the children themselves. Do you not think it could be good because the kid could learn about the joys of brown love from <laughs> What's going on? Well, it could know that it ain't, sex ain't only there, you know, there's also the brown wings, whatever. I feel that that, that is an option. I think we, what we need to teach children to understand that there are people who have an attraction to their same sex but that it's unnatural. Well, what about a couple of girls who like to drink from the furry cup? Should they be allowed to adopt kids? A couple of whom? Girls who like, who like to, you know, eat from the bushy bowl, whatever. Should they be allowed to adopt kids? I have no, no experience of this and I really don't know. OK. Do you think there's enough teenage pregnancy? Maybe too much. But don't you think if it's working down there, then put it to use? If the grass is on the pitch, let's play. <laughs> what is known as the cognitive maturity, to be able to relate cause and effect, for example. How come there's so much teenage pregnancy if English girls is all so frigid? Explain that. I don't know that they are. I don't know they are. <laughs> well, they are. They've got nothing on the French, because my mate went to Calais and he, he slept with three girls. And that was only in a day trip, and one of them was 28. Well, that's just promiscuous, for God's sake. He must have paid them. He didn't pick them up in the supermarket. No, that's he said they fancied him, and one of them was a model. They do it for a living. 
Now, I don't know if any of you has heard of it, but there is something out there called the third world. These is some of the poorest and most <laughs> shitty countries on the whole planet. Some of the children in Bangladesh is so poor that they is wearing trainers that is three or four years old. <laughs> what is needed is sneakers that have real grip when it comes to the problems these kids face in doing the moonwalk and crazy legs. <laughs> this is Samira. She has to walk for over 30 miles to the nearest disco. <laughs> and don't think that just because she lives in the jungle that she has ever heard any. She ain't never listened to nothing above 130 BPM. <laughs> so what we want to do today is turn the tables on the third world by giving the third world turntables. <laughs> if you remember one thing from tonight, let it be this. Give a man a compilation tape and he will dance for a night. <laughs> Teach a man to scratch and he will be dancing for generations. <laughs> Of course, what is most important for these people is access to clean water, so that when they is eat up, they don't get dehydrated. <laughs> but now, here to lend us support in the studio, please give it up for a very special lady, all the way from Albert Square, it's Melanie from EastEnders. Can we just say, and I hope everyone out there agree with me, that you is the best thing in that show. You is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Rikai, Rikai, I love you, Rikai. <laughs> so, so tell us, why do you think we should help the third world? Well, there's so much suffering. There's been some disastrous famines, especially in the last few years. Disease and pain for millions of people. And I think it's our responsibility to help. For real, I was feeling that you care. And Melanie, there is someone I really want you to meet. Please, brothers and sisters, welcome Gary Ingrams, the lucky winner of our I Get to Knob Mel from EastEnders competition. <laughs> Here's the now. Pick out the show. Yeah. <laughs> you are joking, no? No. But I've come on to help a good cause and do a bit of a tap dance, not have sex with a teenager. But they've been selling tickets in every little chef around the country. <laughs> I myself has bought 40. <laughs> well, maybe you should have thought about asking me first. But how do you think this poor boy must be feeling? I mean, look at him. It ain't going to take very long. <laughs> no. Fair enough. May respect you all the more for that. Will you at least bring him off? No. Come on, it's for charity. Just a, just a quick shake and fuck. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but no. Well, you is a very, very bad person, and I hope that Coronation Street go down the tube. EastEnders. Whatever. Speak to the hand, because the face ain't listening. You're really immature, aren't you? Um, what's, what's the number after, after two? Three. Three! Jinx! You cannot speak till I say your name! Victoria! <laughs> Victoria! As for you, don't worry. I'll introduce you to my sister. Buy her a pack of quavers and she'll sort you out. <laughs> Steve the Force, let it rock! Now we all look back at the music of the 80s and laugh hysterically at their hair and clothes. <laughs> but who knows, in 50 years time, people may look at a picture of me and think I look ridiculous. <laughs> I doubt it. That is why this week I is going to take an 80s legend and help bring her into this, the 20th century. <laughs> so, from the pretenders, please big it up for Chrissy Ein. I've got to tell you, Chrissy, the main reason I've got you on this show is as a favour for me, Uncle Jamal. Im always talk about having a sandwich between you and Susie Quattro. <laughs> Sounds good. 
you ain't met me Uncle Jamal. <laughs> now, age-wise, you, you ain't no Billy. <laughs> as Minan says, you is only as old as the man you feel, and she is currently feeling a 37-year-old. <laughs> Hello, Uncle Derek. <laughs> What is he going to play for us tonight? Uh, I'm going to sing the classic, It's a Thin Line Between Love and Hate. I recognize your accent. <laughs> is, is you from Egham? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, big it up for none other than the legend Chrissy I. <laughs> Between love and hate It's five o'clock in the morning And you're just getting in You knock on the This door. is really depressing <laughs> You was running all five of the show the Let's speed this up a tiny bit is it? She opens up the door and lets you in Never once Speed it up a tiny bit more been. She said Are you hungry? Did you eat yet? All the time she's smiling, never once raises her voice. Chips instead of onion rigs tonight. <laughs> fool me. Gonna fool you there is a thin line between love and hate. It's a thin line. As Chrissy Iron says tonight, there's a thin line between, between many things in life. And especially between Punani and Batty. <laughs> so take care and don't take your misses out the wrong man. And we has just got time to update you on the telephone thing. Reebok has offered 40,000 pairs of trainers to give to the third world. And there's only one thing to say to that. Reebok, come off it. It ain't 1991. <laughs>